When our minds drift to the image of Robert E. Lee, we think of the tactician and the strategist, or we imagine him in his later life as president of Washington College, later to be named Washington and Lee University. But we rarely, if ever, think of his love life or his consistent flirtations with women throughout his lifetime. Welcome to Have History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and today we will take a deep dive into Robert E. Lee's personal life and explore his relationships with various women throughout his lifetime. As one historian put it, Lee was an extraordinarily handsome man. A soldier who served with Lee in the Mexican-American War described him as, in the very prime of manhood, of remarkable presence and address, perhaps the most manly and striking officer in the service, of great grace, of manner, and great personal beauty. Lee's good looks were not lost on himself. He knew all too well that his dashing outward appearance garnered attention, and he intended to keep up appearances. His attention to his exterior began at an early age. When he was 16, he became his own barber, cutting his own hair and manicuring his own facial hair, the mustache in his early years, and his iconic beard later in life. He was known to cut his hair, mustache, and beard every day, applying small snips to look the same at all times. To his dismay, he did start losing his hair at a young age, and he started using a comb over to cover the bald areas. He was a bit of a dandy. He cared about fashion, and his portraits over the years show him sporting George IV curls, bushy sideburns, and matinee idle mustache, and the war era beard as soon as they came into style. Within his own family, he was not considered the handsomest, though. His brother Smith Lee got that title in the family, being termed an Adonis by his contemporaries. So many ladies in the local area wanted his picture that their brother Carter contemplated selling them to the girls for a profit and would have emerged greatly wealthy had he done so. As Smith got older, Lee acknowledged that no charming women have insisted on taking care of me as they are always doing of him. As women noticed Lee, he noticed them back. He wrote of St. Louis girls, I have met them in no place, in no garb, in no situation, that I did not feel my heart open to them like, like the flower to the sun. He was thoroughly entranced with the female form and delighted in conversing and flirting with as many as he could handle, even while married to his wife Mary. Lee made a statement about women in general. As for the daughters of Eve in this country, they are formed in the very poetry of nature and would make your lips water and fingers tingle. Being an engineer for the army, many of his outposts took place on or near the beach, and he fondly gazed about as women exposed more of their skin while in their swimming suits. He also commented while in Mexico about how he liked the short skirts of the Mexican women. In his preference to women, he preferred them fleshy, admonishing his soon-to-be wife to add on some more pounds and being dismayed when she fell below 144 pounds. His flirtations with women were legendary, especially in the army. One of his superior officers had a stunningly beautiful wife, and in his flirtations hinted at an unsuccessful affair and that he might be the father of their new daughter. At his brother's wedding, he slipped away from his wife and convinced a group of girls that he was the younger brother of the bride and said, Sweet innocent things, they concluded I was single and I have not had such soft looks and tender pressure of the hand for many years. A woman he kept up a long communication with got married to a heavily bearded man, and he wrote to her that, I should hate her sweet face to be hid by such briars, unless they were mine. He wrote to the same woman's sister that her letter aroused him by saying, See what a temptation to sin you will give me. And then he used a 19th century autoerotic euphemism. Do you spare me the blame of its commission? When the young lady got married, Lee even quizzed her about her wedding night, asking, how did you deport yourself? Did you go off well like a torpedo cracker on Christmas morning? Not to give the wrong impression, he did not do all this behind his wife's back. Mary was party to most of, if not all of it. She would write notes on the very sensually charged letters that her husband wrote to these women. Lee even wrote to Mary that a strong-minded woman led him into her garden to see her corn and potatoes by starlight. Recognizing that no one enjoyed the company of ladies more than her husband, Mary calmly called it the greatest recreation of his wholesome life. Despite all of his flirtations and innuendo, 
there is no evidence to suggest he ever acted on his words. He was not a prude in any sense of the word, and while in the West, many of the officers in his command kept Indian mistresses. Lee even helped one of his friends sneak the friend's mistress into Camp Cooper, and paid no mind to the horde of mistresses roaming about the forts and encampments, some of them giving birth there. But no one ever whispered of Lee taking part in any of these scandals. So what made Lee resist temptation? Partially it was self-denial that was part of the soldier ethic Lee had enthusiastically internalized. Also, moralists and health mongers of the day also strongly favored a behavioral code in which individual will triumphed over base or instinctual feelings. When he noticed that he became too infatuated with the Mexican ladies swimming in their undergarments, he began visiting the river early in the morning or late in the evening to avoid them. Pryor explained it best when she wrote, Lee never showed the slightest inclination to abandon his marriage. But it may be he was unconsciously looking for a response that he failed to get from his under-awed wife. Perhaps lacking the attention he desired, he created a stimulating but safe little harem of relatives and young girls who teased and pampered him and allowed him to play the perpetual courtier. Again, there is no evidence to suggest that Lee ever went past flirtations. But the story of his fondness for the ladies humanizes the legendary character that numerous authors have created since the Civil War ended. I hope you learned something in this video, and please check out my other videos, like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so, and I'll see you next time. Historian, historian, where do you roam? Historian, historian, far. History will travel, he's the card of a man. A professor with knowledge in the hard land. To educate the world is his mission. A professor of fortune is a man called historian. Historian